Hello guys from Plant Reviews, today the usual fortnight tour of my fragrant garden where I will talk also about some bits of non-fragrant flowers but I will start today obviously 25th of July it's uh, um, midsummer and I have a few new blooms to show you and I will start from the nicely fragrant sweet peas. Uh, I planted these sweet peas uh, together with uh, some glory lily and indeed I have the first one coming up. Today it bloomed, it's quite a deformed flower, hope the next ones will be better. Uh, well these bud looks already better, still have to color up. And uh, um, I have actually three pots where I planted um, sweet peas and uh, glory lilies and uh, all the three of them have uh, turned up quite different from what uh, I expected. Uh, these uh, uh, two of the pots have actually uh, grown uh, the bulbs, in particular uh, in this one out of three bulbs I planted of glory lilies, all the three, uh, sorry, three tubers, all the three have uh, sprouted and are the gloriosa superba rothschildiana, the gloriosa rothschildiana, so then I suppose is actually the same variety uh, but on about them in two different nurseries and they were uh, tagged differently and here we have the Gloriosa Superba from Angle Bulbs. I'm not too sure if uh, actually the blooms will look similar. I have uh, a few buds at the moment so looking forward to see the flowers. Here in the central pot uh, uh, none of the three tubers I planted of Gloriosa sprouted, while here in the pot on the left, out of three tubers planted, I have only two sprouted. Uh, I'm not too sure why one is missing in the pot on the left and not even one actually bloomed in the central one because the potting mix was precisely the same. Uh, the tubers obviously of Gloriosa were different. Uh, for example here the Gloriosa that didn't uh, sprouted is a Gloriosa plantei while uh, the Thomas de Bruin both, uh, I were two Thomas de Bruin and they both sprouted. Here I had a Gloriosa Rochiliana, a Gloriosa Oriental Super that I was hoping to see and I had the Gloriosa Super, one Gloriosa Superba from Angra Bobs that didn't sprout, luckily the other one from Angra Bobs sprouted and is blooming, it's a, it is in bud, so hopefully I will see the flowers. Um, I'm very sorry I'm not able to uh, show you the Gloriosa Oriental Super because I really was looking forward to see the flowers, but anyway I will try again next year. The only thing I can think about is that uh, after I planted the tubers uh, we had uh, a couple of days with very low temperature in May and this might have actually disturbed the tubers, even if the other plants uh, developed perfectly fine. Uh, among the uh, glory lilies there are beautiful flowers but unfortunately don't have any fragrance. I decided to plant three different varieties of sweet peas. In particular here we have the painted, uh, some seeds they were labeled as painted lady. This is actually the painted lady color of the sweet pea. Nicely fragrant, uh, it does, will not uh, basically uh, perfume your garden but uh, definitely uh, it is fragrant, I can clearly uh, smell it. It is a very sweet, yes yeah, a kind of sweet um, fragrance but not sickly sweet, it's like there's a lemony and a grassy scent in it, uh, very pleasant. Um, definitely not uh, sickly sweet like uh, tuberose for example. Uh, in addition to the painted lady in the same pot I have uh, this uh, weird sweet pea flower that doesn't look at all like a painted lady uh, flower but is actually very fragrant so I'm quite pleased of this uh, uh, nice addition that uh, from my painted lady uh, 
sweet peas. Here I have the sweet peas, sweet pea matucana. This is supposed to be one of the most fragrant sweet peas. This is a little bit sweeter uh, of the painted lady and it's actually a little bit less fragrant. Um, I'm not too sure why. Uh, because also they have the same exposition, they have an impartial shade, probably in full sun they would have smelt, uh, they would have perfumed even more. However, uh, I think color-wise I prefer better the Matucana, I like a lot the uh, combination of the uh, kind of lilac with the burgundy maroon on the top of the uh, petals, even if the painted lady is also at its own uh, delicate uh, beauty, very elegant flower. Uh, continuing here, I have a uh, uh, gardenia and uh, another bloom. With a beautiful fragrance, this plant is starting losing leaves. Uh, I'm not too sure why. I keep it moist and I put it in a cashew soil. I might be just a terrible person with gardenias, but I know that they are not overly uh, easy plant, but the thing is that the fragrance is so amazing that uh, I just keep buying them and unfortunately I think I keep almost killing them. I have actually one from last year that survived. It has still a few blooms and some buds as well and a spider net on the top and I will see if the flowers are able to develop even if the plant really doesn't look too good. Um, continuing here, let's see, well, I have some clematises in flower and I have some, one actually of my favorite jasmine. This is my absolute favorite jasmine for fragrance. This is the Jasminum Azoricum, the Azor Jasmine. This is a plant that survived this winter that was not very it was not very uh, cold at all, uh, so I'm not too sure how can fare this plant against uh, colder uh, winters like uh, when we had the beast from the east in the UK. Uh, however, this is a plant that uh, is a cutting from the south of Italy, where I come from. My father gave it to me because he knows that uh, this is my favorite jasmine. And uh, uh, even in the south of Italy, you can have uh, some days at uh, temperatures uh, below zero. So it is uh, um, pretty, I'm pretty much sure that uh, this jasmine can be grown outdoors, uh, at least in southern uh, England. I will keep you updated, obviously, in the next uh, few uh, years. Uh, and uh, I, this, this jasmine is also very peculiar because it's a very star-shaped jasmine, like most of other jasmines that have uh, kind of rounded petals, as you can see. And uh, the uh, number of petals vary between five and four, as you can see in this one. The fragrance is very lemony, very, very uh, citrusy. As you know, this is probably my favorite fragrance among flowers. Continuing here, I have a beautiful uh, uh, lily, the Salmon Star, that weirdly uh, has uh, developed some uh, quite deformed flowers in comparison to last year. Yeah, last year I had two flower stems, this year only one. And I have, uh, well, one that is kind of deformed. This flower is uh, quite peculiar in uh, shape. Basically the three tepals are extremely small and you can actually see only the three petals. Uh, tepals and sepals in lilies, sorry, petals and sepals in lilies are very similar. As you can see in this, this is the only normally formed uh, lily uh, flower that I have on the same plant, as you can see. And you see the inner the three inner uh, projections of the flower, of the perianth. Perianth is uh, the combination of sepals and petals. The sepals in lilies as well as in tulips are the three uh, that are uh, further away from the anthers and the stigma, the, f uh, the male and female part of the flower. The closest are the petals, three petals, and the furthest are the three sepals. As you can see in tulips and in lilies, uh, the flower, uh, the flowers usually uh, have petals and sepals very similar in shape, size, and color. 
and are called uh, tepals indeed, and together they form the perianth. In lilies, as well as fritillaries that collect the crown imperials or tulips, they are there are six tepals. I'm not too sure why this year the lily decided to this lily decided to bloom very weirdly. For example, here I have a lily with two sepals and two petals. Uh, this one has uh, three big petals and three very small uh, sepals, and this lily has uh, five uh, normally uh, normally long tepals and one that is actually one petal deformed i'm not too sure why the fragrance this is the salmon star the fragrance is nice not particularly strong but what makes the salmon star incredible is the absolutely gorgeous color you can see how the uh, i'm sorry that today is a cloudy day but even in a cloudy day you can see how beautiful the salmon orange color is on this uh, lily here I have the lily uh, Shirazade. As you can see, it's a lily that bears lots of flowers in a flower spike that uh, can have uh, more than 50 flowers, sometimes even 100. And uh, it is a beautifully uh, burgundy, uh, burgundy striped flower, absolutely striking. Not particularly fragrant, unfortunately, but uh, definitely is. Uh, uh, it reaches a huge display. I planted a couple of bulbs, and as you can see, they are they grew quite well uh, in this uh, area. It's very, very sunny area. Talking about fragrant plants, uh, I show you here the only fragrant plants that I uh, really regret to have planted, and this is the passion flower. Costance Elliot. I don't have unfortunately any in bloom at the moment. I will make a video as soon as I have a few blooms uh, However, this is a plant that is uh, unbelievably invasive uh, This as you can see you can see how This plant is basically strangling every plant uh, gets in contact with and This is a plant that I definitely will try to get rid of again uh, when uh, in autumn when hopefully I can reach the base of this plant uh, the fragrance is a very very delicate fragrance kind of lemony uh, the flowers actually are a gorgeous flower they are um, nice uh, round perianth with a like a spiny crown uh, near the uh, near the uh, pistils and the stigma, sorry, near the stigmas and the stigma. And uh, I will show you anyway uh, uh, in um, one of my next videos how is uh, the flower of this plant. If you are able to keep it pruned properly, it's one of the most beautiful flowers you can have. It's a basically a white variety of the normal blue passion flower, Passiflora cerulea. Uh, however, like the normal passion flower, it's a very, very invasive plant. Uh, I have a few uh, flowers still of the pineapple broom with its gorgeous pineapple uh, kind of mango pineapple uh, fragrance. Unfortunately, the blooms are almost over. Well, it's the end of July anyway, and this plant uh, mostly blooms in uh, June. Uh, continuing here, I have some more lilies. I have uh, still a few blooms of uh, this uh, trumpet lily. This is the Golden Splendor, one uh, definitely of my favorite lily lilies, both for fragrance and the gorgeous, uh, splendid yellow flower, as the name is. And uh, here I have, unfortunately, I don't remember the name of this uh, absolutely gorgeous as well, like red purple uh, lily. Uh, it is uh, also uh, kind of fragrant, but here I have one the first bloom of the stargazer lily these are the some of the most fragrant lilies you can have in your garden and some definitely of my favorite because of the gorgeous bright pink color and the wonderful fragrance but in here i have a few clematises in bloom as well as the clematis josephine uh, decided to put some more blooms and the blooms in this variety as you can see are absolutely gorgeous you can see how many petals they have uh, this second blooming is a little bit uh, made a little flowers a little bit smaller than the first one but still absolutely uh, gorgeous uh, here I have still Linaria purpurea in bloom this is a non-fragrant plant 
and uh, uh, like the uh, Clematis Josephine, uh, however is absolutely loved by pollinators. And next to it I have a wonderful still uh, Sestrum Parky, the green Sestrum or the green Night Jasmine, where it is, uh, uh, there's a wonderful fragrance in at night time, kind of a very unique fragrance. Uh, kind of uh, soapy, uh, like a really, really wonderfully perfumed uh, detergent uh, during the night, but during the day usually it smells weirdly of just cut up potatoes. Uh, it is uh, kind of uh, strange this difference in fragrance, uh, however at night time the fragrance is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, continuing here, I have the balloon flower in bloom. Uh, the blooms are again very gorgeous. You can see the, the beautiful bluish purple of the uh, flowers. However, they do not uh, have any fragrance uh, as well. As continuing here, I have some Heliopsis with their beautiful uh, yellow flowers and variegated foliage uh, that also unfortunately don't have any fragrance. But in this side of the garden, I have one of my most, not most fragrant, but definitely one of the best scented lily, I, lilies I have in the garden, and this is the Lilium Nymph. This, unfortunately, is the last bloom at the moment of this lily. And as you can see, it was in bloom until a few days ago. And this has a wonderful cinnamon scent. It's, uh, it's the only lily I know that has this kind of cinnamon scent. Proceeding here, I have uh, um, some uh, honeysuckles uh, flowers that I believe is the serotina. I will uh, double check with my um, with the plants uh, list I have in the garden, but I'm pretty sure it's serotina. That is as a wonderful fragrance, especially at night time. And uh, here I have the um, Badreya uh, buzz uh, with, uh, uh, this is the variety magenta. The, this is a plant that really can perfume your garden. If you want a plant that can perfume your whole garden, I would say just put uh, oriental lilies, trumpet lilies, and uh, Badreya, they will basically, and Honeysuckle. These are really the four plants that will make your garden smelling uh, divinely in summer. Absolutely incredible. Uh, the fragrance of the Badreya is kind of sweet and uh, it's a sweet that uh, is very different from the sweet of the lilies. It's more uh, really like sugary and uh, it is, uh, as you know, uh, probably it's called also butterfly bush because it attracts uh, tons of butterflies. Uh, not too many in this cloudy day, but uh, in a sunny day it's just uh, covered in butterfly. Very beautiful. And as you can see, continuing here, I have some, uh, well, oxalis in flower. Very nice bush. I made a video a few. Uh, weeks ago and uh, obviously I have some more lilies, some uh, oriental lilies as well as orient pet that are also nicely fragrant but this is the lily for example uh, I think this is the lily debbie I like a lot of the combination of orange and red but unfortunately this one is not fragrant this instead is an oriental lily that unfortunately I don't remember the name but uh, uh, it is uh, um, very softly fragrant uh, the flowers are about 15 centimeters in size uh, however, lilies, uh, uh, I think that lilies are gorgeous plants regardless. Their fragrance, that is absolutely a bonus, but also the colors are just incredible in these plants. And uh, these are really uh, plants that I always have uh, uh, wanted in my garden. Uh, continuing here, I have, well, a few pots of uh, uh, lupins, red and purple lupin that are not, well, really they are fragrant, but not really the best fragrance, uh, they are quite pungent. And here I have my uh, yellow tree lupin, not in bloom anymore, I harvested the seeds, uh, the last seed pod yesterday, and uh, it is very important with this plant to harvest uh, seed pots in time to uh, before they basically explode and spread around the seeds. Uh, continuing here, I have still the, the incredibly gorgeously scented um, 
honeysuckle. Uh, the, this is the uh, yellow and white honeysuckle, also called gold and silver honeysuckle. That is the Haliana, the uh, Lonicera japonica varieta, varietas Haliana. Uh, as you know, this the new flowers are white while while they age, they become yellow. And this is one of the most gorgeously scented honeysuckle. Honeysuckles quite uh, quite invasive as well, but uh, definitely one of the most fragrant plants I have in the garden. If you want a fragrant garden, this is, uh, I would say, a must, the um, Lonicia Reponica Varieta Saliana. And then I have one softly uh, fragrant Clematis, and this is a Clematis Montana. Uh, I will make a video uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, this is a clematis that will not really uh, make your garden smell uh, wonderfully like the clematis pixie, but it's definitely a very nicely uh, soft fragrant clematis and I like a lot also the four petaled flowers. They are really, really nice, especially because they are quite, they are born on quite a long stem and they give to the overall appearance a very delicate appearance. I'm sorry, guy, that uh, I have to show you the garden in a quite uh, cloudy uh, day today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, the, is, uh, if you would like to support my channel, it would be great if you can please subscribe. If uh, um, you didn't like the video, obviously, more than uh, will be more than happy to uh, know uh, what you didn't like and obviously uh, trying to improve, leave your comments. I will try my best to improve my uh, next videos. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye.